Well, good morning everybody and welcome to Jasper National Park. We spent our morning driving about halfway up the Icefields Parkway from Banff to just inside Jasper National Park is where we are at the moment. And we are at the Columbia Icefields where we are gonna get the chance to walk on a glacier. Very cool. We've got a tour booked for quarter past two. It's about two o'clock now, so we need to head in, check in and get going on this tour and walk on a glacier. My name is Sam, I'll be your driver slash tour guide up to the Athabasca Glacier. Uh, the drive usually takes about 12 to 15 minutes, but I like to drive quite fast. So we're going to be there sooner. Who's excited? Woo! That was the loudest one of the day, that was pretty good. Nice. Uh, we also provide seat belts, I strongly recommend that you wear one, it is going to be a steep and bumpy ride. We're going to talk about the formation of glaciers, how they got here in the first place. It all starts with a ton of snow and a process called fernification. Ooh, ah. Not to be confused with another word, I know what you guys are thinking. But it was kind of the same, two things come together and make something new. So, fernification, the way it works is we get a ton of snow here at the ice field throughout the year. We get about 30 meters or 90 feet of snowfall in one year. And what happens at the very top of mountains, at this very high elevations, it's much colder. So that snow doesn't melt during the summer, it stays. And over the years, it starts to stack up on top of itself, creating a lot of weight and a lot of pressure. And eventually the snow pack will force the bottom layer of snow to compress into a layer of ice pellets. So if you folks have ever made a snowball before, that is what's happening just on a much larger scale. And we call that layer of ice pellets fern. It's an intermediate state in between snow and glacial ice. And over the years, many layers of that fern will start to build up. Now the fern, the ice pellets, they're even heavier because it's compressed snow. So it's creating more weight and more pressure and eventually it is forced to compress into solid glacial ice. It takes about five years and 50 meters or 150 feet of snow just to have the required weight pressure to create one meter or three feet of glacial ice. So it is a very slow and lengthy process. Thumbs up if you're still with me. About half the bus, that's better than usual, I'll take it. So I have a basic understanding of how glacial ice is formed. So now we can talk about the difference between a glacier and an ice field. They're both made out of glacial ice, but the main difference between the two is that an ice field is stationary, it doesn't move, it's stagnant, whereas glaciers do move, they flow. They get dragged and pulled downhill by gravity. A good way to demonstrate this is if everybody holds up your hand like this, that you're given a high five. Yes, participation points, you can redeem those in the gift shop after. Now when your hand's like this, your palm represents the ice field, and each one of your fingers represents one of the glaciers that the ice field feeds. So another way to think of it, the ice field is like a lake of ice that has many rivers coming off of it, and those rivers would be the glaciers. Make sense? Yes? Alright. Now additionally, to be considered an ice field, it must be at least two major glaciers, the Columbia Icefield feeds six, and you're guaranteed to see at least one of those today. In front of us, we have the main event, the one, the only, 
the bold, the beautiful, the blue, the breathtaking. They're running out of adjectives. The amazing Athabasca Glacier. Woo! Woo! So All right, so if you guys want to save the excitement till the end, I get that. It's okay. Now they're also working on the new road for next year. You can see at the left hand side, it's going to be more parallel with the mountain side there. We change our road every three years so that we're not uh, sort of eroding away the same part of the glacier for too long. And after about eight months, this section of the glacier is going to be completely healed up and it'll look natural like the rest of the glacier here. It'll be all wavy. So our Im impact on the glacier is minimal, if any at all. Glacier. It's the temperature as well, even though we're not very far from where we are. The temperature has definitely dropped. This is the Canada we were expecting. This snowy, cold Canada. But it's just the, the trucks are so cold that they bring them up on. And to see the actual science of it and the different layers of the ice and the fact that it is melting before our eyes as well. It's such a shame that these are melting all over the world really. But it's, it's so cool.
know what? We stopped off in Banff Avenue on Banff Avenue to get petrol this morning on our way here. And unbeknownst to us, there's a Chili's in Banff. And now Dean can't believe that we've made it one a week before we realised there was a Chili's here. And it you can't get it out of his head. It's all you can think about. And that's our driver keeping us back, unfortunately. But I could stay out here a bit longer. Could you? We need to be on the right hand side of the bus again so that we're going back and seeing the stuff from the other side. But that's a definite tick off the bucket list, walk on a glacier before they're all melted. That a definite tick off the bucket list, walk on a glacier. How cool. It's been refreshing though, hasn't it? And nice to actually see some snow and ice. I'm gonna know. That's the insane of the holiday. It's like when we're out somewhere, especially when it starts to go dark and it starts to get a bit cooler, and I'm stood there making him wait for me to take photos. He goes, "Can't wait to put that fire on in the room." So it's the chilies and the fire. Fair play. Hi folks, welcome. Did you guys get the photos you're looking for? Yeah. Did anybody drink the glacier water? I did. Really? Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It has anti-aging properties. I'm about 87 myself. <laughs> Takes about two weeks to kick in, so if you look rough tomorrow. And if you guys take a look at the right hand side of the bus and put it back in the glacier, you're going to see the ice steps. You can see there's three distinct ice steps there. They're also known as the ice falls because that is where the ice is funneling in from the ice field and being fed down into the glacier. So because the snow doesn't stay on the glacier long enough, all of the ice here was made up top there. So you can uh, they estimate that right around here it's about 200 years old, this ice. But up on the ice field, in the very middle of it, where it doesn't move as much, well, it doesn't move anyways, but where it's not spreading out as much, they estimate it could be uh, remnants from the last ice age about 20,000 years ago. Now, if you were to stand up on that ridge and look out towards BC, you would see a desert of ice as far as the eye could see. It's about 165 square kilometers, and the average thickness of ice up on the ice field is 300 meters or 900 feet solid ice. Now that's a lot of ice. Some more uh, information about the glacier run right now. The Athabasca, it's at just under five kilometers or three miles long from the ice steps down to the toe of the glacier. It's about one kilometer or a half mile wide at its widest point. And the depth of ice you were just standing on was roughly 200 meters or 600 feet of solid ice. That means you could fit the Eiffel Tower within the thickness of ice that we were just standing on. On the right hand side we have some mountain goats of the two-legged variety. Yeah, they're just people. Those guys are on a professionally guided tour called Ice Walks. The fellow in the red jacket is a professional guide. I know because they stay at camp with us and I've been on that tour as well. They do three and six hour excursions, um, both of which start from the lower lot on the left hand side of the center down there. The three hour excursion takes you up to the turnaround point where we just were. The six hour one takes you all the way to the bottom of the ice steps and back down. Now anybody could walk from the bottom of the glacier, there's nothing to stop you. But I strongly advise against it unless you have the proper equipment and knowledge. And if you don't have those two things, then you need a guide with you. It is very dangerous to walk around by yourself on the glacier. People die every year from that. Not on this glacier, but in general. However, during the hot seasons out here, I do see almost every day people walking around in flip-flops and shorts. And that is what I call the natural selection tour. It's, it's free. So, there you go. Basically all the glaciers are melting. For example, the Athabasca is projected to be gone between 50 and 60 years from now. It will be a big empty valley. Uh, there might be a post-glacial lake left over that's called the Tarn, at which point in time I have to trade in my bus license for a boating license. 
I'm sure the company will figure out a way to run to us here. Hopefully, I'm not still working here at that time. Who knows? But uh, the Earth mass won't be the first. Many will come after. Now, what does that mean for us? It means higher sea levels, which is less livable terrain. We're going to have less freshwater resources, which means uh, that agriculture is going to take a hit from that. And we're going to have slightly less power because the hydro dams won't be receiving as much flow. And what can we do to make a difference? There's many, many things, I'm sure. If you enjoyed the tour, once again, my name is Sam. If you did not like the tour, my name is Antoine. <laughs> That's my boss from last year, so he'll never see it anyways. Hope you have an awesome rest of your day and stay in the Rockies and safe travels to everybody. the footage but it was on a, a, a vlog a few days ago it was a hundred percent a pika when we went to marine at sunset do you remember that's what the inspiration for pikachu is that's the animal that inspired the pikachu pokemon pika pika <laughs> they are cute that's what i want to see Damn right I would, it's like a big cuddly Kiko. <laughs> Do you know I saw um, signs in Canmore telling people to remove the buffalo berries from their, from their yards to not attract the grizzlies. They must absolutely love them. I'd also love to see one of these. Or one of these. Or one of these. And when I say see, I mean like from a safe distance, dear. I don't mean like go over and pet it. I'm not an idiot. But we haven't seen any big predators at all whilst we've been in Canada at the time, have we? Tell a lie, Dean. We did see a coyote the first time we were here. Oh, run across running the across the road and we were mistaken and thought it was a wolf and got really excited but it was a coyote
It's pretty cool up here. Someone doesn't like it, that sounds a bit hot. I think it's pretty cool. The glass floor, if anything, is just a little bit disorientating. Because when you look down, it kind of looks flat, but also not. It's a bit weird. But yes, Jane's back over there somewhere. I think that's going to conclude our visit to the Skywalk. Short and sweet, I saw the view. We've got other things that we want to see whilst we're up this Icefields Parkway. So, not staying too long. Also, there's no one there to take my picture, really. Someone wouldn't come on. That was never happening, though. Oh, come on. It was just slightly disorientating because when you look down, you could see ground, but it was just it wasn't scary in any way. Very oh, scary. <laughs> and all this land sort of in front of it all here where it's all bumpy and probably also like going behind us all used to be part of the glacier also that's why the land is is shaped like that and it's all just retreated back as it melts and they did unfortunately say that in 50 to 60 years that won't be there at all it will have completely melted and perhaps leave behind a ton of water kind of like this one here Maybe it'll leave a ton of water, but they don't know. But they do think if global warming continues the way that it is in 50 to 60 years, that won't be there. That kind of makes global warming and everything very real to me because I will only be 81 in 50 years. So I hopefully <laughs> will still be here and would be able to tell future generations about the time I walked on a glacier there that is no, no longer there. You think of global warming and it only have an effect like way in the future, not in your lifetime, but it's not true. Okay, so we've driven about 25 minutes up the road from the Columbia Ice Field to Sunwapta Falls. Looks like a very nice waterfall.
two people told us that fact today at the Columbia Rice Fields, and one of them said North America and one of them said in the world. I could believe it to be amongst the top five in the world, to be honest. It's just mountains everywhere. And the autumn colours are just stunning. There's glaciers, waterfalls, rivers, mountains. I could believe it to be amongst the top five in the world. But if not, it's top five in North America. I wonder where the Pacific Coast Highway fits on that. I think it'd be higher than this. Do you think? Yeah. No. How happy were you to find out there was a Chili's? Like, undeniably happy. And you've got your honey chipotle crispers. We've been Menu. staying to Stan Rose and we've only found out there was a Chili's here today. So, <laughs> what is like? Well, at least we found out before we left. So we've both got our favourite, the honey chipotle crispers. Well, Dean's didn't even touch the sides, so he finished whilst I was still eating mine, so his plate is gone. Mine's all finished now. This street corn had like spice on the side and bits of cheese and stuff, that was incredible. The honey chipotle chicken was as good as always. Now this is something that I really wish the UK would get on. It's the free refills on the fountain drinks that you get in the US and Canada. The profit margin's already there. I think it costs 5p to make a pint Shut up. Shut up. Of, this, of the fountain sodas that you can get in the pub and I think in the UK you can't get a pint of that you can fill I'm less still than waiting for me to refill my pints but I don't know where it's gone. So yeah, I think it costs 5p to make a pint of Diet Coke out of syrup. In the UK, you pay upwards of £2 for a large Diet Coke. So the profit margin to just give you free refills. Most you're going to drink. The only place that does refills really is Nando's. Oh, but you have to pay a premium to get the free refills. For four pounds. Yeah. The profit margin must be there because in the US and Canada, we will see like, how much that drink was. Like and I've had this two pounds, two pounds or just for one drink. Yeah, and then I could even say to them, "Can I have a refill to go and take it with me?" The UK needs to get on it because. Clearly, they still make a profit or they wouldn't do it. We're just stingy. So, we paid 51 Canadian dollars for our two meals. We worked that out in dollars, it's 37 US dollars. So, about the same what we were paying in California, but in California, they had that like deal where you got a starter, a main and a side was it? No, you drink, you starter and you main and it came to about 35-ish for the two of us. I made up that total of chips and the clock. Well, so you couldn't fill up on them. To be fair, because we haven't filled up on a starter, all of our mains is gone. And we haven't overindulged. Skipping dessert. But yeah. Really good, really happy that we found the chilies. It's our favourite. If you watch the California series, you'll know. It's one of our favourites in the US. It's my favourite US. So this chilies is actually connected to a hotel called the Fox. Fox Suites. The Fox Suites or something. 
and it looks absolutely stunning. Let's see if I can just get a pool. I can't really show you because there's people down there, but the hot tub is like sunken underground. It's not like a hot tub like you would think, is it? It's like a dug into rocks. It's so cool. And then they've got all the trees in here. It just looks so nice. And there's people taking the uh, chilies. Yeah, there's chilies, there's chilies room service. So this is now on Dean's bucket list yeah. to stay here. Do I have to um, surprise you and just be like, this is where we're staying? Cheaper than the Fairmont, actually. So, realistically, Dean, you could have saved yourself some dough. Yeah. <laughs> Probably stay a week in here for a night in the Fairmont. <laughs> Well, I did forget to end this vlog probably because we were shattered after a long drive and a long day, but we had a wonderful time exploring the glacier and the Icefields Parkway. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and we will see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.